Hello and welcome back to Rev Real Estate School. I'm your host, Michael Montgomery, and today we are talking about how you can wow your clients with these very simple strategies. So first off, why is this important? Well, if we think about it, we've all been through the case of buyer's remorse. Now, buyer's remorse happens to our clients all the time. Sometimes we hear about it, sometimes we don't. What we're going to discuss today is how you can avoid these cases of buyer's remorse when we don't hear about it. So what does this in fact mean? Well, when we're thinking about buyer's remorse, it can be buyer's remorse as in I bought the wrong home, but it can also be buyer's remorse as in I selected the wrong real estate agent. And that is what we want to avoid. And so today we're going to discuss how you can in very, very simple ways wow your clients throughout the process and where in the process are they most likely to have second thoughts and how can we avoid this? So we're going to unpack five different stages of the process, whether you're working with a buyer or a seller, and we're going to look at what you can do at each one of these stages in order to avoid them having buyer's remorse over the agent they selected and even the home that they selected. So the first one is post listing presentation. So after the listing presentation, sellers are considering pricing, but they're also considering realtors. And this is a moment where we can really stand out if we choose to. We can really stand out amongst the other agents that may be competing for this seller's business. And even if we aren't competing, the seller could be Googling around, looking at other agents, seeing what other agents offer, even after our listing presentation. So we need to stop that in its tracks and we need to wow them at this stage because this is a stage where you've done your presentation, you've had a meeting with them, but at this point in time, they haven't fully selected whether they're going to move forward with you or with somebody else. So this is a key moment that we really have to wow them and we don't have to overcomplicate it. So what's the simplest way that we can wow them at this point in time? Well, there's really two things that we can do. First off, if something was discussed during the listing presentation, something personal, if they were to mention their favorite coffee shop, if they were to mention that they love books, if they were to mention that they love golf, can we send them something very small that speaks to something that is important to them? Not just real estate related, but is there something personal that we can send to them? Now, there's not always going to be that sort of information. There are times where we have a listing presentation and we're just like, I don't know. I don't know what they like outside of me just showing them what it is going to take in order to sell their home. And so if that's the case, we can always default to very simple video, email, and handwritten card. So we do these together. First off, after the listing presentation, the day after we're sending a thank you via video email. Very, very simple. It can be short, it can be to the point, but we're thanking them for their time. We're thanking them for their consideration. And then with that, we're also sending a handwritten card. Now, the timing of this is actually quite important because we're sending that video email, they're getting that, and then at that point in time, they're like, hmm, I kind of like this person. They're going the extra mile. And then a few days later, they get your handwritten card in the mail, and then that reaffirms their decision. And so this is a really powerful combo of the video email plus the handwritten card. And it's very simple and almost costs nothing in order to send this to a given seller or a buyer. So you can use this strategy, or if there's something a little bit more personal that you wanna send them in the handwritten card, please do so. And even if you don't want to do that, you can even mention something personal in the handwritten card. Hey, I love the wet bar downstairs. That's beautiful what you did with that countertop. You can mention that in the handwritten card and that forms a stronger bond right there and decreases buyer's remorse. The next stage, and this stage is very important when it comes to buyer's remorse, is post contract signing, pre listing or pre actually buying a house. So this is when they have signed maybe a buyer rep agreement or they've signed a listing agreement with you. And so they're moving towards the listing process or they're moving towards going out and starting to shop, but they don't know if they made the right decision when it comes to an agent yet. Oftentimes at this point in time, they're realizing how much work they have. They're realizing how much work it's going to take to get the house ready to go. They're wondering what the process of showings is going to be like. Same thing on the buying side. They're wondering, are they going to be able to find a home? What's happening in the market? And so what can we do in order to reaffirm their decision to choose us? Now, this is where I like to send the care package. So once they've signed the agreement, or once the buyer has signed the buyer representation agreement, they are now trusting us. So we want to thank them for this. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to send them a very basic care package. Now, if it's on the listing side, we're sending them things that they can use in order to make their life easier when it comes to listing. So in this care package, I'm having real estate related items. So if it's a seller, there's going to be hand sanitizer. There's going to be a sign asking people to take their shoes off. There's going to be the general real estate related items. But then on top of that, we want to add some personal items. So oftentimes I will add some sort of local good into that basket that they can use. If they have kids, I will 
will also add some toys into there as well. This then reaffirms their decision to choose you as their agent, and we are decreasing buyer's remorse. Now, the other thing I like to do here, especially with a seller, but you can also do this with a buyer, is you get them a dinner out. So when that listing comes to the market, it's going to be a busy couple of days. So at this point in time, we want to take some of the load off for them. And so we send them out on a dinner. For the first night out on the market, they're getting sent out on a dinner. And this is a really nice way to kick off the listing process. At this point in time, think about what they're discussing during that dinner. They're definitely going to be discussing their listing. They're going to be excited. They're also going to be wondering what this is going to be like. And they're also going to be having dinner on you. Now, you're not going to be there. They're going to have this privately, but very frequently, they're going to be bringing up how happy they are that they selected you as their agent. And this is such a great time to actually reaffirm that decision. Next, we have during the listing process or while they're shopping for houses. So this is another key point because during this point in time, this is where they can really start to doubt. So if their listing has been on the market and it's not selling, this is where doubts will be high. This is why at this point in time, communication needs to be on point. We need to be communicating on a regular basis. Now, if you haven't seen our video on Market Monday emails, make sure you watch that. We'll have that linked up in the show notes or in the description below so that you can actually see what you can do in order to maintain that listing. Now, the next thing I like to do is I want to decrease the amount of work that they have. So there's a couple of things that we can do here. We can offer to have a cleaner come through and just help them keep the house clean. Now, I don't love this one in particular because if somebody was to send that to me, I'd think, hmm, you think my house is dirty. So in fact, I don't tend to use that that frequently, except for if the seller is complaining about having to keep the house clean all the time. Then it's a very easy movement towards just offering them cleaners for a week. The next one, and this one is pretty specific, is doggy daycare. So if they are having showings and they're having to get their dogs out, offering them doggy daycare for a few days. Really, really nice gesture to help them with showings. And the next one you can use is skip the dishes or Grubhub. You can send them basically a way to get meals without having to cook. And so this can be a really good strategy, especially for busy families. This also works great for buyers as well, just to kind of keep them excited with the process. You can also do the dinner out with buyers if you'd like at this point in time. And a nice thing to do, actually, if you're out with buyers is at this point in time, actually invite them out for dinner so that you're there too. And you can kind of start to talk about the process more. You can get to know them as individuals. And so with buyers, it's nice to form more rapport, more of a bond with them during the shopping process. This will cause your referrals to skyrocket because this is a time where you are very much connected with them and they're connected with you. You're building trust with them. And then you take them out for dinner during their shopping process. This can be absolutely key for decreasing buyer's remorse. The next one is post offer acceptance. So once an offer is accepted or once contingencies are removed, the first thing that's going through everyone's mind is if I'm a seller, could I have sold for more? If I'm a buyer, could I have bought for less or bought something different? So at this point in time, we need to reaffirm their decision around real estate. So here, what I'm doing is I'm sending them relevant comparables that are making them understand that they sold their home for a great price. So if market conditions are becoming weaker, then I would be explaining to them that prices came down by X amount over the last month, you sold at a good time. In the case of a buyer, I'd be sending properties that have sold or that are listed at similar prices to what they paid, but are worse. And this then helps again, reaffirm their decision around the property. So at this point in time, they may not have as much buyer's remorse around you, the agent, but they'll probably have buyer's remorse around what they sold their home for or what type of home they bought. And finally, we have the move in. So this is kind of the classic time where buyer's remorse can kick in, right? You move into the house or you sell your house and then you're like, shoot, did I make the right decision here? Well, a really good strategy is oftentimes when somebody moves into the home, we're going to do our normal closing gift. But then after a week or so, we're going to call them. We're going to follow up. We're going to wonder, hey, how's everything going? Is everything working well in the house? Now, typically what's going to happen here is they're going to say, yeah, we love the house. There's a couple of things we're working on. But other than that, the house is really great. So what we need to do is we need to dig into that last little comment around there are some things that we're doing around the house. And here we offer half day handyman. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to form a relationship with a handyman. We're going to send that handyman to their house, 
give them a half day with that handyman to just fix up anything in the house. Now this is done not in conjunction with the closing gift, but this is done after the fact when we're following up and they're realizing that there are some things to fix up in the house, which every single house will need this. This is such a great strategy. It's not overly expensive. And again, it's going to cause your referrals to skyrocket because they're going to thinking, wow, I really made the right decision when it comes to my real estate agent. So those are five times where it can be very, very important for us to understand buyer's remorse, not just from the house, but also from selecting an agent. And it's key moments like this where we can use these very simple strategies in order to reaffirm their decision, both with the house and with us. Thanks again for tuning in. If you want to reach out, I'm on Instagram at the.michael.montgomery, or you can head over to revrealestateschool.com. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next lesson.